Froggy. Da 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 da. Well, hello, John. Well, hello, Dave. I feel like we've been talking for hours and hours and well, haven't really said we anything. Have. <laughs> <laughs> we'll eventually get this thing <laughs> figured out. Uh, I decided to use a uh, my. I have a nicer computer that I've been teaching myself to program on for the past year, um, but it's <laughs> not as good for recording, or it's better. I don't know. Once we figure it out, it'll probably be great. We'll see. Either way, what do we got today? Uh, but you know what? We haven't done Rush in a while. I think it's time to wake the people up. Um, we have a good many Rush fans uh, who watch our programs here and uh, enjoy our rapportee. So uh, <laughs> I thought we'd do a quick Rush song since we've used so much of our time uh, trying to work on the tech issues. Let's uh, let's pick a nice shorty. <laughs> I'm fully down with that. The song is called Madrigal. And, as uh, as it, in magical? It. it is sort of spelled weirdly. Madrigal? All right, here we go. Turn my headphones up. Not the intro I expected. You weren't kidding with how short that was. <laughs> huh. That was some of the most different rush I think you've shown me yet. Uh, yeah, I, they haven't done hmm. much in the way of uh, ballads. Uh, yeah. If they did, it'd be more of a power ballad. Well, so. I almost feel like I could have heard that at a Ren Fair. And, well, and there you go. Well, the, the whole album is Farewell to Kings. You have heard a few of the songs, I think, off that record. Mm. Uh, so yeah, you're right. Ren Fair, exactly. That's the whole imagery they were they were putting forth on that record. It makes a lot of sense. It was very minstrel like. There was um, there was one instrument I couldn't pick out. I bet it's uh, just a, a sound for the keyboard, but it was like this weird high pitch. Yeah. yeah, the one that sounded like a whistle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I was wondering sound. if one of them was playing a whistle, but I it was it was a keyboard, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely keyboard. I, that's fine. Um, lyrically, I. I feel like it's just sort of like a sad, like you've gone out and had the adventure and now you are just finishing. Like you're, you're the retiring adventure. And of course, I, if you've watched our channel for a while, you know, I play Dungeons and Dragons and um, 
So I got very much the the sense that like you have this character and they've gone out and they've slain the dragons and they've you know wooed the princess and they've done whatever they've done in their their lives, and now they're just kind of done. And and it's almost like this sadness. Like I I went out and I I did it. There there's not really more dragons to slay. Like my time has come. So now I'm gonna come home and I guess I'll relax. But like there's also this sort of sense of loss. Like well I guess I did it. I feel like that a lot when I finish a book I'm really into or uh, see a movie you're really into for the first time. And it's it's like that weird sense of you're sad. Like you're so happy you had the journey, you had the experience, but at the same time you're sad because you can never do it again for the first time. And it doesn't matter how much I love a book, it's never as good the second time. And there's something about that experientially as people that it's just nothing we ever do is quite as fun after you've already done it. Yeah. I mean, to an extent, I think, I think you're talking about mountaintop experiences. Mm -hmm. Everybody seeks that mountaintop experience, that pinnacle of their career, the climax. But the problem is what happens after the climax? Yeah, because now I'm now regular life resumes and and we're just kind of going about it. And I don't even think it has to be a climax. It doesn't have to be a mountaintop experience, just like a really fun experience. And then you're back to your normal night. It's like cleaning up the dishes in the evening after the party (laughs) ended. You know, like there's just this sense of like, this is normality. This is just me sort of cleaning up after the party. And I had a blast and my friends were here and we ate good food and we drank whatever. And like, it was fun and it wasn't some mountaintop experience, you know, but like, it's just now that portion is over and I'm just sort of here now. Well, I I was thinking of the way you were talking about it. I was comparing it to like athletes Mm. who... You know, like their career starts to wane a little bit, and instead of getting out, they just keep trying, keep trying, and they they end up not. They end up getting cut from the squad or whatever. And then athletes who are like forty years old are done, and they mm. still got another couple of decades to live. You know, how do they reach the heights of where they were before as a king going off to war? You know, that's why Vikings probably like to die in the in the field better there than melting away at home. Well, that and it's how you get into Valhalla. But I I do that's think this say. I do think this song like gave me that feeling, but at the same time, if I'm breaking down the lyrics, I think it's talking about someone who is sort of like they've lived that life and now they're sort of almost done with it, if if that makes sense. Because it's like I've done it all. But now, like, I feel like nothing's safe anymore. I feel like there's no safe port in the storm. I long for the distant pair of eyes. Um, And I think maybe it is actually the feeling of you've done it all and now you want to go settle down. You want the calm after the storm. You want to do the dishes because that means everyone has left and you get to go to bed soon. (laughs) You, You want to learn how to play golf. Yeah, yeah, because I <laughs> have done it and I'm good. I don't want to learn how to play golf. I do like putt putt though, but that's a side yeah. note. <laughs> uh, so complete side note. Hey, if you're ever gonna go play putt putt, the secret to putt putt golf is uh, think about how hard you should hit it, and then hit it way softer than that. Mm. That it, that is weirdly the secret to putt putt golf. A friend of mine told me that, and then I, the next putt putt game I played, I dropped like ten to fifteen strokes off my putt putt score. Just always assume you need to hit it softer than you actually well, do. Here, here's to keeping track of your putt putt score. Mm-hmm. There you go. Mm-hmm. I got a. Oh, rebel! All right, a little rebel seed. I'm down with that. That's a good brewery. Which is a cider. And uh, I promised I would only drink one can. So you just got the giant can. <laughs> so it's 32 fluid ounces. Well, I only have, ever have one wine because a bottle is a serving size. Did you know that uh, a bottle of wine has fewer calories than two 12-ounce bottles of 90-minute IPA? I know wine. It depends on the wine, though. Particularly the red wines are, are lower in caloric mm-hmm. intake. Pinot Noir is uh, my go-to usually. Mm-hmm. We're but, more low people around here, and I'm sure it's pretty low as well. I like the Merlot. I'm a fan of a good dry red. Hey, you ready for some trivia? <laughs> sure. Let's do some trivia, Dave. Trivia time with Dave. Been a while, Dave. Mm, too long. Too uh, long. What I want you to do is uh, tell me, 
I'm going to give you some choices. I'm going to give them to you alphabetically, of course. Mm -hmm. As you uh, should. Avalanche. <laughs> that is A, correct. Exhaustion. Mm -hmm. Falling. <laughs> Got it. Or mountain sickness. I don't know what that is. Go on. I didn't either, so I looked it up. Mountain sickness is caused by reduced air pressure and lower oxygen levels at high altitudes. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, in my it, brain, mountain sickness was like what the old uh, codger with the crazy hair who lived in the mountain has. And he just runs around and screams things. Maybe that's why. A weird hermit. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Uh, what you need to do is tell me which of those is the number one cause for death of climbers of Mount Everest. Oh, I could almost see it being mountain sickness. I mean, you got to carry your own oxygen up there. I, I know you can't breathe when you're that high. I could see avalanche. I don't know if it's falling. I feel like falling is the throwaway, you know, like falling is the red herring. Because, like, you assume it's going to be falling. You're mountain climbing. And then it's like, no, it's not falling. It's asphyxia. Um, I want to go mountain sickness. I really do. I, I, cause I feel like that is the lead cause of other things, you know, Ca lead cause would then be hypothermia. I assume is how you'd actually die, but. Well, let's see. Do you get the bell or the buzzer? Listen. I don't know. Cause... Sorry, Dave. You're not correct. <laughs> that happens to me. Well, so what was it? Was it falling? FYI, the, the bell and the buzzer come in post-production. Neither of us heard it. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, falls was the number two, and oh, avalanche good. was number one. Oh, I mean, good. <laughs> so Get this, though. Good. Avalanche makes up 25% of deaths of climbers of Mount Everest. That's it? 25%. 21% falls, 11% motion sickness. 9% exhaustion, mm. or mountain sickness, 9% uh, exhaustion, and the rest is other. Hmm. Yeah, I know that unfortunately, um, or fortunately, I guess, depending on your point of view, dead bodies are used as uh, waypoint markers along the trail. Mm. So that's fun. And apparently the entire top is just trash at this point. Just memorabilia people have dropped off, flags. Like, it's, it's just the entire top of Mount Everest is stuff that people have deposited at this point. And the trash truck is late as usual. Mm -hmm. Always. It's just <laughs> lazy government is what it is. <laughs>